Let me introduce you Paola Voinovic, art historian at the Opera di Santa Croce in Florence, uh, amazing monumental complex a few meters from here. She's going to tell us about uh, an interesting, very interesting case history of crowdfunding. Crazy for Pazzi. Paola Voinovic. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Good? Better like this? Good morning, everyone. I would like to thank, first of all, uh, Luisa Vieroma for this invitation to participate in this year's uh, summit. And thank you for all, uh, thank you for all of you being, for being here. In the name of Opera di Santa Croce and our director, uh, Giuseppe De Micheli, uh, we, were, we are very proud to share with you um, our recent success in the crowdfunding field. You might know this image. Santa Croce is one of the oldest uh, churches in Florence. Last year, we celebrated 720th anniversary of existence. Known also as the Westminster of Italy, Santa Croce is the burial place of the Italian greats, such as Michelangelo, Galileo, Rossini, and the list goes on and on. The topic of my presentation today will really be about innovation. And you might ask yourself, how can a church eight centuries old be innovative? I think when you talk about innovation in cultural heritage, you kind of have to think about Italy. And on this map, you actually see all of the heritage sites listed in the World Heritage List of UNESCO. Italy has the highest number, 50 different locations are listed on UNESCO list. And the biggest challenge Italy faces today is how to find funding for this amazing cultural heritage it's, it has. Um, the same problem that we face in Opera di Santa Croce. So to be innovative in the field of culture means to respond to the cultural tendencies of the world travelers people coming from different cultures like India, or China, or Russia. And Santa Croce is really great in this. For example, last year we published the first guidebook, a new type of a guidebook in Chinese language. Not just translated in Chinese, but written by a Chinese expert using concepts that would be great and appreciated for actually a Chinese audience. So that is one kind of innovation. The other kind of innovation is the field of fundraising. And um, how can you, you know, meet the needs of an eight century old complex? In 2014, we realized that um, we had a very big urgent need to restore the loggia of the Pazzi Chapel. Loggia is kind of a porch in front of this very famous monument in the city of Florence. It was designed by Brunelleschi it was commissioned in 1429, and it was basically meant to be the chapter house, so the meeting room for the friars. It was commissioned by a very important businessman, a banker. His name was Andrea Pazzi in 1429. Over the centuries, this beautiful loggia in front of it, that dates to about mid-15th century, started to crumble, to literally crumble to pieces. Here are some examples. The gray stone you see is Pietra Serena, and you see it everywhere you go in Florence. Uh, Pietra Serena has this tendency to basically um, flake off over time. And we realized we are going to need to restore this quite quickly. So the idea was to turn to the crowds and reach out and see what kind of response they would get if we ask for help. The idea was not so innovative. Believe it or not, in the 19th century, Florentines donated small sums of money to pay for the facade of Santa Croce. So what you see here is a beautiful marble facade, and then behind it you see the complex, how it looked for centuries before the new facade was added when Italy united for the first time as one country. So we're basically repeating a concept that they used in 19th century, just at this time, the borders of one country no longer count. We were able to reach internationally. We decided to use a platform called Kickstarter. 
uh, it is based in the US, and as you will see later on, uh, most of the Kickstarter users actually come from the US. And we had invaluable help of two partners. One was RS Games, uh, their leader in Italy in using Kickstarter to finance their really beautiful board games. So we had their expertise, and then we had the Florentine, the English, English mag uh, newspaper uh, in Florence. I don't know if you're familiar with Kickstarter, but I wanted to just give you a few ideas. What happened last, just last year on Kickstarter platform? 22,000 creative projects were actually funded uh, last year. 3.3 million people from every, almost every country in the world donated about half billion dollars to the Kickstarter projects. If you think about a minute, that's $1,000 a minute. Um, I might leave you for a second to look at the numbers and maybe find a country that interests you the most. But for me, it was important to see what happened in the US. 2.3 million backers gave about $335 million. And then if you scoot down and you look at Italy, about 14,000 backers actually gave about 3 million, which is quite great for a small country like Italy. Um, there were about 1,796 art projects that happened last year, and they got about 14 million pledges. So Santa Croce is proud to have been one of them. If you go on Kickstarter today and you put Santa Croce Opera, this is the screen that you would see. And the numbers you kind of see in gray on the right, uh, 859 is the number of backers who helped us to fund this project. And we, we basically were able to reach, not only reach our goal of 95,000, but actually surpass it. About $7,000 more poured in at the end of our campaign. It is really beautiful to have this because it's almost like a time capsule now. It will stay there forever with our movies, the updates, everything we did over time. We had only 32 days to do this. Where are our backers coming from? I want to start with Italy. Um, a lot of people came from Florence. Of course, they're proud of their city. Florence, Prato, Tuscany, all overall, and then mostly around Venice and Milan area, and about five backers came from Rome. The biggest number of our backers came from the US, followed by Australia and New Zealand, which is quite interesting that New Zealand and Australia had pretty much the same number of backers coming in, and then around the world. It was also amazing to see that out of the 855 actual backers, 62% of them were the first time donors. So we moved them so much that they were able to create their account, log in, and give a donation. Every Kickstarter project works in a way that you have a, basically choose different awards that people who are interested to donate get. Um, the lowest level was $10, and with this great small donation that pretty much everyone could afford, uh, every donor gave, uh, had a, a chance to have their name recorded in a small book that will be kept in our archives for centuries. Some people also donated as little as $1, uh, writing also very cute messages saying, I wish I could give more. Here is a little breakdown of our pledge levels, and you can see that 35% were actually the donors who gave us $10. What are the challenges of Kickstarter? Um, I think the, one of the biggest challenges is that you have to choose the duration of your campaign, so that deadline cannot be changed. And also, you have to choose a goal, monetary goal, that if you don't meet, you don't get anything. So for example, this screen uh, was showing us just towards the end of our campaign. We were about $4,000 short and thinking what is going to happen. So for 32 days, it was kind of nerve-wracking to watch this number rise. 
and then think, oh, I have 25,000, 35,000, 45,000 are coming in, and we might lose all of it if we don't reach our goal. So these are the two challenges that one has to kind of think of if you ever think of a, um, an initiative like this. What is the recipe for success? I think, first of all, having an amazing city like Florence that has so many lovers around the world is number one ingredient. Number two is having a, a, a beautiful um, idea or a moving project. Number three, communication. If people don't know about it, how will they be able to help us? So here are some examples of the advertising we did and little pieces of Pietra Serena decoration that were actually detached over time, carefully numbered to then be attached back on, starting this week, actually. Here's another beautiful example. You can see the damage in the beautiful decoration. This um, beautiful hashtag, crazy for Pazzi, uh, Willie was moving because if you know Italian, Pazzi means crazy. It was a wonderful play of words. And this is one of the images we used for our Instagram campaign. Another event we did, we did a Twitter chat. It was a live chat that happened towards the beginning of our campaign. So kind of giving us another push in the social media. And lastly, um, another recipe for another ingredient in this recipe would be celebrity endorsement. Uh, this man, you might not recognize him. His name is Peter Weller, and he was actually the original Robocop. I think most of you are too young to know him, but I see some people nodding. So uh, anyway, he uh, is an art historian, an actor and director, and he came in to do a small video for us towards the end of our campaign to kind of give us the final push uh, to meet our goal. I think the most beautiful part um, of this campaign not only was raising the funds and starting the restoration that will start pretty much today as we speak, the scaffolding is going up, but also the fact that we were able to reach out and acquire new friends. People around the world kind of felt part of this project and I think here you have a beautiful quote written in the 19th century that I think people today can also relate to. When I walk to Piazza Santa Croce, I feel that it were not a Florentine nor European church, but a church built by and for the human race. What I wanted to do is show you what people wrote today. This is a um, wonderful image of our archives. And you see the books that were kept for this more than a century now, uh, with all the donations that came in for the facade of Santa Croce. And the numbers given were as little as 1,000 lire. Our donors have a chance to now be part of history as well. And I think that was the key ingredient, the fact that they were able to make a, a, make a difference in a moving project. And people responded to that. I'll let you read. But my favorite is the first one, if I had to choose one. Greeting from Orlando, delighted you reached your goal. My first visit to Firenze was in 1957, and still traveled there to put my arms around your beautiful city. Or the one by Ma Mauro Fiorentini, as a Florentine citizen, I'm so happy and proud to have supported this funding for my beloved Firenze, for a magnificent church and chapel. The last one, Carlos Garcia, came from Spain. So really all around the world. Our campaign continues on. Crazy for Pazzi kind of really lives forever. And uh, if you go to crowdfunding, santacroce.opera, you can actually uh, still make a donation uh, for this project. And if you would be so kind, also follow us on social media uh, at Santa Croce Opera. Before I say final thank you, I wanted to maybe show you the video of Peter Weller, our most famous celebrity that came on board.
Hi, my name is Peter Weller. I'm a member of the uh, world's film, film community, but mostly, uh, most importantly, I studied here in Florence for two years, got my master's degree from Syracuse University. I just finished my PhD from UCLA. The beginnings of architecture that we have today in the Western world, what we call deductive architecture, that means you can write it down on paper, you can deduce what it is, it's proportion, it's a system of balances, began here in Florence, mostly with this building. Brunelleschi's genius in the Pazzi Chapel is evident here, but we need money to restore it. So if we go closer to it, we can see what it needs. What we're restoring right now, what we're raising money for right now, is this incredible porch. It needs to be restored. Essentially, the air and the humidity are eating away at it, and we need money to restore this particular endemic, organic piece of architecture that is so important to the development of early modern architecture as we know it today, all the way up into Frank Gehry. So there are three items here that I want to point out as examples of what needs to be restored in the front of the Pazzi Chapel. The first is this entablature. You can see right above the columns, it's called the entablature. Across it, you see these little round things, but these are getting deteriorated with the humidity here and essentially the elements. We really need money to restore them. So uh, on the facade underneath this porch of the Pazzi Chapel, we have the possibly finest relief sculptor in the history of ceramics, Luca della Robbia. Luca della Robbia is as important as Donatello, Michelangelo, Raffaello, Leonardo, or all the rest of the Ninja Turtles. As a matter of fact, Luca della Robbia is easily the most important ceramic sculpture in relief ever in the Renaissance. This needs to be restored. Just like on the architrave, on the frieze in the front, we have these rondels, these decorative elements in the frieze underneath the Robbia. These things, like I say, we take for granted in the United States. We see these cute little things in the friezes of all the neo-Renaissance architecture in the United States and England and so forth. But this building is representative of one of the first examples of this since Rome. So these need to be restored because you can see they're terracotta. They're terracotta relief on the stone of the building itself. And terracotta, as you well know, is very fragile, and the elements over the years have worn them away. Listen, this building is as important to the development of Renaissance history and Renaissance art and architecture as the David, or anything that you may love about Florence. This building is seminal to what we study and know today in terms of art and architecture in the Western world. We need your money to restore it. It's very important. Florence constantly needs wealth and support to keep its objects of beauty in maintenance so that generations to come will enjoy them. So please give generously. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, we will be here in the corner. Uh, we would love to welcome each one of you uh, to Santa Croce. So if you're interested, please stop by. We will give you a free pass to visit our complex today. Thank you.